My school has this nice wooded area surrounding it, and if you follow either way in or out of the school, you'll end up in a little shopping area in front of the school. Now, I like to take long walks through the woods to help clear my mind or just be alone for a bit. However, I'm not sure if I can ever step foot in those woods without thinking about what happened tonight. There was a home football game this evening. My brother wanted to go, and naturally, uh, my parents forced me to go. Law of twins, the worst law. Now, I only stayed for about two periods or quarters, uh, before walking around and forcing myself to socialize a little bit. Even though I didn't like most of them, it was better than the football. During the fourth quarter or something like that, I asked my brother if I can go back to the car, which was parked in the shopping area across the way, so I can start it up and be ready to go by the time he walks over. He gives me the keys to our shared car and I make my way to the car. While walking through the parking lot, I decided to take a quicker shortcut through the woods, and that's when the craziness started. I swear that I could hear someone walking behind me, but every time I turned around, I was met with an empty trail. I found this odd, but dismissed it as paranoia. I just kept walking, but I began to feed this paranoia, and eventually, I was able to convince myself to speed up to a brisk pace, so I can avoid getting snatched up by this invisible threat that was pursuing me. As I sped up, I realized that the footsteps I kept hearing wasn't my mind fucking with me, but actual reality. I looked behind me to see a guy in a black hoodie sprinting after me. Panicked, I began to pick up my pace. I could see the edge of the woods and the lights of the shopping center before two other hooded guys jumped out in front of me, forcing me to take a left and into uncharted territory. I could hear all three of them screaming obscenities at me. I didn't even know who these guys were. Their voices were filled with the strongest of spite and the darkest of intent, though. It was horrifying, and I wouldn't wish the experience even upon my enemies. Eventually, I found myself in a neighborhood at the northern end of the woods, and turned around to see nothing chasing me. I stopped to catch my breath, and cried. I couldn't help myself. The words they said were too violent, even if they were teens. I didn't know if they were empty threats or a promise to something that I could see in the future. Eventually, I calmed myself down and walked myself back to the stores across the street, found my car, and locked the doors the second I got inside. I didn't even use my phone. I just scanned the area around me, making sure these creeps didn't follow me, and that was good enough for me. So, this event happened three years ago in May, at the very end of the senior year of college, when I lived in Indiana. It's a pretty small college town, but had a large student population, 40k plus students. There's not much to do outside of the town, since it was pretty much in the middle of nowhere in central Indiana. Some of the surrounding area was pretty sketchy, and had known crackheads and meth heads, but they usually hung around gas stations and laundromats and just kept to themselves. At the time, I was living in the heart of downtown, where all the bars were. In my neighborhood, maybe 50 yards from the bars, was where the majority of the fraternity and sorority community lived too. My street was pretty empty at this time, as most of the other students had left and went home for the summer as well. So, at night, it was kind of dark and vacant looking. But there happened to be one flickering streetlight next to my house that was on. Now, I lived in a two-story eight-man house, the only house and largest living space on the whole street. Uh, the rest were just apartments, with my fraternity brothers. Uh, this was an old barn-style house and had two doors, uh, one at the front and one on the side leading from the porch. Uh, my room in the house was the smallest, and in the corner part of the second story, my room had one small window, but you couldn't see any light from my window unless you were in a very specific spot standing outside of my house. Out of my eight roommates, I was the only one to have a final exam on Saturday, the last day that final exams were offered. All of my other roommates had already moved out a day or two before. It was Saturday, 
about 1pm when I just got out of my last final exam and I felt so relieved. I went back to my place and started cleaning out the house and leaving used furniture and random stuff outside on the sidewalk for garbage pickup. My roommates didn't clean out everything and we'd get charged on our lease if we didn't. And I didn't feel like getting charged so I stayed and cleaned out the house that day. As I was mindlessly cleaning and putting stuff on the sidewalk for trash all day, it was about 5pm and I was on the second floor of my house. When all of a sudden, I see a vintage sky blue pickup truck pull up next to my junk pile outside. There was this old hick-like looking man with long grey hair and a ponytail, and an old fat woman with scabs and marks on her arm who stepped outside of the truck. They both started rummaging through the stuff I had just put outside. I thought that they were meth heads or something, and didn't want them near me, so I go outside to the front to make my presence known. When I go outside, I didn't say a word yet, but this man and woman look up at me with an intense blank stare for a good five seconds, as if I had caught them red-handed doing something wrong. At that point, I had a gut feeling that they were up to more than just looters looking for used junk, after five seconds, without a single word from either of them, and not even a hi or a hey, mind if we take this, they quickly divert their eyes back to the junk and haul off two or three items from the pile and place it into the back of their truck. The old man and woman get back into their truck and drive off suspiciously slowly. I watch them drive off until they are out of sight. I thought to myself, okay, that looter encounter felt stranger than it had to be, and I'm not sure why. I mean, the towny looters always come around student housing after finals looking for free stuff, but this man and woman gave me the creeps for some reason, and definitely weren't normal looking. After that, I just brushed it off and thought that they were just the typical druggy weirdos of the township looking for free stuff. Whatever, I thought. Fast forward to that night, around 12am, I was pretty tired of pulling all-nighters, studying for exams, and cleaning the house all day. Instead of taking my car and driving to a McDonald's like I had planned, I just left my car in the driveway and decided to make some ramen and chill upstairs and watch some Netflix. I was half asleep, but about 30 minutes later, all of a sudden, I heard a loud bang. What sounded like the side porch door being slammed closed. I thought the bang sounded odd, since no one should be here but I was too tired to check it out. I rationalized that it was probably just a car door slam of a student in the apartments adjacent to my house. I continued to just watch Netflix. Not more than three minutes later, I heard the same loud bang again, but this time the hair stood up on the back of my neck, and I knew for sure that it was really the side door this time, since I knew that sound well. I froze, and my heart dropped into my stomach. I'm totally fucked here, I thought. No one was here to help me, and I'm really tired, vulnerable, and defenseless. I slowly get out of bed and tiptoe to my door and crack it open to peek out to see if any lights were on the downstairs, or if I could hear any footsteps on the first floor. But I didn't. As I sit there, peeking through the crack on my door for a good minute or two, I hear an engine revving right outside of my house. As scared as I was, I had to figure out what was going on for my own safety, so I quickly darted to the second story window that faces the front of the house to look outside. Just as I get to the window, I see an old white, very rusty van cruising slowly by. I'm talking the type of rust that rusted up the entire van that you would pretty much only see in a horror movie. The back door of this van had just closed as I got to the window, while the van was still moving, mind you, so I couldn't see who hopped in the back. But I could see the shadow of a man in the driver's seat of this van, cruising in front of my house. He was cruising unnervingly slowly away from my house, as if they were onto the next one type of pull-away, I thought. At this point, I'm absolutely terrified, and wasn't sure if anyone else was still in the house. Keep in mind, nothing of major value was still in my house as everyone already moved out. I didn't dare go downstairs into the pitch black though to check it out. I run into my roommate's room and lock myself in there, since my door didn't lock. 
I immediately text the group chat I had with my roommates to ask if anyone else had come back to the house then. And most of them responded quickly saying they hadn't. I text them, I think someone is or was here in the house. And my group text started blowing up at that point, and everyone, all eight of them, were just as curious as me as to what was going on in the house. They told me to go investigate the first floor and recommended I use my shoe as defense. <laughs> Bastards. I thought it was clearly stupid and I refused, as I was too scared and didn't have any real weapons or anything to use. As I was in my roommate's locked room, I was flat on my stomach on the floor with one eye peeking underneath the door to see if I could see anything, or even hear anyone walking around in the house. I was really vigilant and waiting to hear something, anything, but I didn't hear anything over the next hour and wasn't sure if anyone was still there. I thought about calling the cops then, but I figured what would they do at that point if no one was there, and I was way too scared to go and check to see if anyone was still downstairs. In hindsight, I should have called the cops anyway so they could at least check the first floor, but I didn't call at the time, even though I probably should have. About another hour rolls by on my lookout, and I keep fighting my urge to go to sleep, but I accidentally did fall asleep not long after on the floor and on my stomach until the next morning. The first thing I did when I woke up is I went downstairs to check if anything looked different or rummaged through. And nothing immediately looked out of the ordinary, until I went to the back porch door where the door handle was really loose and the lock was unlocked. My heart sank in terror when I finally saw how they got in. I thought to myself they must have broken in, saw all valuables and rooms were pretty much empty and there was nothing to steal. Maybe that's why they didn't even bother coming up to the second floor. I didn't know or care, but was so glad that they didn't that night. Also, my car was in the driveway too, so I thought either they didn't think anyone was truly home, or a more terrifying option is that they were prepared to deal with someone being home. So, I called the cops immediately after that, and reported the incident that happened last night. Now, the cops thanked me over the phone and told me that they'd be on the lookout for the white rusty van. After I hung up the phone, I had a moment of, oh fuck. Right then, I actually considered if maybe those same looters who I saw earlier that day were somehow connected to last night. A chill went down my spine and it spooked me out big time. But I didn't even bring it up to the cops on the phone. I'm not sure why I didn't. Anyway... After I hung up with the police, I quickly went back to my room, packed up my car with the rest of my stuff, and got the hell out of there. I drove back home for the summer, and I never looked back. G'day mates, it's Bee Buster here. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, thanks again to the Hive members that bravely shared their stories for us all here, and I hope you guys are all doing really well. For the chance to have your story feature in a video, you can send your story to my email, which is in the description below. If you would like more scary stories too, you can click on the card at the top right of your screen or on one of the annotations on your screen right now. As always guys, it would be awesome if you could like, share, comment, and subscribe if you're new. Uh, don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for updates throughout the week. And also, if you would like content early and completely advert-free for as little as a dollar a month, uh, feel free to click on the link to my Patreon account and sign up there for regular MP3 format stories. Uh, thanks again for tuning in and for all the love as always, guys. And I'll see you mates in the next one.